Hi, in this video I'm going to paint a rubber glove. It's a rubber kitchen glove. This is what the finished painting looks like. And here's a reference in case you would like to use that for yourself. Feel free to paint from it if you want. So I'm starting off on an 8x10 panel uh, and it's tinted with a kind of a green gray. And uh, I actually kind of like that color and I might just um, leave a lot of that color as the background. Um, the glove is hanging against a kind of a flat surface so and the color of that flat surface is very similar to my background so it might work out. Um, in this uh, painting I'm going to try something a little different from what I'm usually used doing in that I'm going to um, try to not use a medium as much as I usually do or maybe not at all um, and start off with uh, kind of this pure thick paint and use that to do my drawing and usually I would uh, dilute the paint um, either with uh, mineral spirits or some linseed oil but um, I have problems sort of with both of those methods. Uh, when I use uh, mineral spirits, I'm sort of hyper aware of the, the health effects that it has on, on me um, and you know the people in my house. So even with uh, odorless mineral spirits, there's still fumes in the air. Um, even though it's a very gratifying way of doing a, an initial wash, uh, there's obviously those um, effects and it's sort of not a very good long-term solution for me, especially if I'm going to be painting every day. And uh, if I use uh, linseed oil, uh, what happens is uh, it sort of creates this uh, kind of a very greasy layer at the very beginning of the painting, which can create problems later on. So if I'm using thicker paint later on and doing kind of impasto strokes, sometimes that uh, has a tendency of not sticking very well. And then uh, I was watching videos of uh, Nicola Uribe um, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce his name but uh, he has a channel called Our Painted Lives and he uses this mes method um, consistently uh, of just going directly into paint and uh, not using any medium and he seems to be very comfortable with it and uh, so I, I wanted to give it a try um, and this isn't the first painting that I tried it on, but I've, um, I found it to be interesting. There's, I do struggle with it a little bit, um, just because that initial layer is sort of, um, is very wash, very kind of like vague, and you can't really have um, very solid kind of crisp lines that I'm kind of used to. Um, but um, what I found is that uh, later on in the painting you do have a lot more control um, and you can use that thick paint all the way from the beginning to the end and uh, and be able to go over those initial layers uh, with pretty crisp sharp um, lines uh, just using the thick paint so um, thanks for Nicholas for um, um, opening my eyes to it. And I don't know if anybody else is painting this way. If you do, um, let me know and see, and let me know what your experiences have been with that. Anyway, I um, have kind of learned to sort of accept the vagueness of the painting in the very early stages of using this method, um, which is kind of nice. You sort of keep things very sort of fuzzy and loose. Um, and zero in and focus in later on, which is a nice way to work. You know, it doesn't go against the way that I usually work, which is keep things sort of vague and washy at the beginning and then zero in on the details later on. So anyway, I uh, started off here um, using, you know, something, another thing that's a little different is I, I used a little bit of white in my paint to begin with. Um, and I kind of want this to be a sort of a low contrast 
kind of a painting. Um, the sort of um, the subject kind of calls for it. It feels like uh, like I, I didn't want to have this very bright pink um, glove, but sort of a more subdued color. Um, and this is another one of uh, my paintings in a series of mundane objects. Um, I thought it'd be a, a fun a fun one to paint. Um, there's something cool about gloves in general. The you know they they remind you of hands, but they're not they're not really hands. Um, so I think in themselves they're interesting subjects and. Uh, the fact that it's pink, it has some parallels to color, to skin color. Um, so that, that's also very attractive to me. Um, the other thing I didn't mention is that this method of painting uh, yields a, um, a more matte surface, which is also kind of interesting. Um, it's, uh, it's different than when you're using a lot of uh, linseed oil in your medium. And uh, you can always you know, varnish the painting later on, uh, but it's actually kind of hard to make oil paint matte, and uh, this is one way of doing it. So that's another another cool part. So for my colors, um, so far I've been using uh, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, uh, you know, some cad red and white for the main glove, and then um, add a little bit of yellow ochre. Uh, to warm it up uh, in the in the light parts, and then this is the kind of inside out part um, of the glove that has those uh, ridges on it, and I'm just using some um, uh, some white and uh, yellow ochre in there, and then just might tone it down a little bit in the shadows with uh, with some uh, burnt umber. So there are a couple of interesting things happening with this subject um, that I want to think about while I'm painting this. Um, I think the main thing is that this, uh, it's kind of the flatness of this glove. The main part of the glove, not the hand part, but the main part is definitely flat. Uh, but then once you get to the thumb and some of the other fingers, there's a little bit of volume, and it's a very subtle kind of distinction there, um, but it's something that I want to capture. And uh, I think the flatness, um, I'm going to communicate not only through light and shadow, but also through the flatness of the paint, which I think is going to be a little kind of interesting. So the paint is going to be flat, it's not going to be shiny, and uh, I'm not going to bring in too much um, contrast in the highlights and the shadows, keeping it kind of um, a little bit more flush with the surface, as it were. Um, so it feels like it's kind of blending into that background a little bit. Um, obviously, there's going to be some play between light and shadow, um, but it's going to be less than my usual paintings. The other thing that's kind of interesting here is the the shadow, the drop shadow uh, that is being cast by the glove. So because it's against the surface, you get a consistent long shadow all along its edge. Um, but the the shadow kind of uh, describes some of the things that are happening um, on the Z axis of the glove. So. You can see how that pinky is kind of pulling away from the main body of the shadow over to the right, and that indicates that it's it's higher up than the rest of the um, than the rest of the fingers. And then you have a little bit more length at the top, um, and also the further the mm, the object is from the shadow that it's casting, the more kind of fuzzy it is and blended into the background. And blurry so that's another indicator and so those are kind of interesting things that it, uh, um, that interested me about this uh, this subject as well so we'll see what we do uh, so 
this is my uh, cast shadow. <clears throat> Obviously, it's uh, it's a lot lighter than uh, what I see in the in real life, um, but that's all part of the plan. Um, you know, because I made that conscious decision up front to keep things a little bit more uh, subtle and uh, uh, less uh, less contrasty. I'm gonna try to stick to that throughout uh, throughout this painting. All right, so I'm gonna work for a while, try to work out exactly where each one of those cast shadow fingers are, and um, I'll see you in a little bit. So one of the things that is a little challenging uh, when working kind of this low contrast type of way is that you still have to be fully conscious of, you know, the, the play of light and shadow and the, and the differences between um, different areas, you know, so you have to look at, okay, is the shadow on the glove darker or lighter than the cast shadow on the wall um, and the, the I think what's kind of fun about this exercise of sort of working in that middle section of the value range is that you you can't you can sort of resort to your sort of I guess known vernacular known vocabulary of how to make things look a certain way. And you kind of have to be consciously uh, trying to kind of fight against that and uh, um, trying to figure out what's going to work within that particular value range. So that's kind of a, um, it's, it's a way to sort of expose a little bit the tricks that you wind up using over over a period of uh, of painting um, and try to be more aware of them because sometimes you're you know if you're if you know that a certain you know a, a little bit of dark at a certain spot is going to make things immediately round more rounded and more dimensional you tend to go to those um, to those little tricks I mean they're not really tricks they're just sort of guess that you would call them like they're part of your visual language um, but it's uh, it's good to kind of re-evaluate them once in a while and see whether that's what you want to do <laughs>
So, so far I think I'm liking this uh, method of painting. I think it gives you a pretty good amount of control throughout the process. And um, I do like the um, kind of the fuzziness of the edges um, from, from the very beginning and then being able to zero in and kind of consciously create those hard lines wherever I want them um, and not necessarily from the very beginning where some of those like if you're using a watery paint or a thick paint uh, to begin with um, you get those kind of hard edges but they may not be in the right place and so you have to wind up adjusting them later on um, this way everything feels a little bit more deliberate I think to me
So I thought that I could get away with uh, leaving the background as is, as the, the panel color. But I realized that I do want to play around a little bit more with the edge between the, between the shadow and the, and the background surface. So I want to be able to kind of vary the, um, the, the softness of that edge and uh, do it through blending rather than scumbling the paint over the surface. So I'm taking a color that's a little bit lighter than the background and that sort of um, will also help me create a little bit of a, a little bit of sense of light hitting that object and kind of falling off around it, um, which I kind of like to, to do to sort of create that focus around uh, the subject. Um, and I'm not going to extend this all the way to the edges. Um, I'm going to kind of feather it out and then just leave some of the panel uh, untouched, which I think is going to add a little bit more interest to this painting, at least to me.
So this is where the benefits of this method of painting without a medium um, really surface. And uh, it's in this kind of middle part of the painting where, middle end part of the painting where you begin to really zero in on those details. Uh, so by, by loading up this brush with the same consistency paint, uh, so this is still paint without a medium, I'm able to create pretty sharp lines. I'm using a synthetic brush and uh, I find that it works better with synthetic brushes because they, they, especially flat synthetic brushes, because they tend to come to a much finer point than bristle brushes and they tend to react more to paint and really kind of each one of the bristles sort of stick together. Um, and the, the other thing that to keep in mind is that you really want to load up the brush uh, pretty well with paint. You can't just um, dab a little bit of it on a, onto a clean brush because it'll clump up, but it'll clump up in uh, kind of irregular ways. I think one of the things that is still a little bit amiss in my drawing is that the overall gesture of the hand. You'll notice that the uh, the two middle fingers are pointing towards each other in the in the reference photo, while the outside fingers are kind of pointing more away and a little bit to the to the left. Um, in my drawing, they're all kind of still pointing straight down. Um, this um, pose of the hand or the glove is actually something that you'll see a lot in uh, classical paintings. When they painted hands, they would never have the hands, the fingers of the hand, all pointing in one direction. Um, and instead, they would uh, touch two of the fingers and let the other ones kind of um, come out away. Uh, and that's just a way to. Um, uh, to create a little bit of organization among the fingers because if everything is pointing in the same direction or kind of pointing straight out, um, that creates a little bit of confusion and the eye is trying to kind of focus on, you don't give a, the eye any, any place to focus. Um, so by doing this, you kind of create a focal point where the fingers are touching and then the rest of the hand just kind of falls into place. So that was kind of interesting that the glove had the same natural pose on its own. So I think as I'm continuing to refine the fingers, I'm going to try to pay attention to that and try to um, resolve that a little bit. Otherwise, I think uh, the painting is coming along quite nicely. Um, there are a couple of other things that are not exactly right, like the, the overall length of the glove is a little bit shorter or a little bit fatter in the reference. But um, that's kind of intentional. I sort of want it to feel like it's hanging down and sort of being pulled by gravity.
So I think adding that uh, little red, dark red accent along the right edge of the glove um, really did some interesting things there. Um, because I found sort of the right uh, tonal value there, which is slightly darker than the, than the wall, that immediately created a little bit of air right behind the glove against the wall. Um, kind of happy to, about how that turned out. Um, now I'm trying to work out uh, the cast shadow and trying to make that feel like it's not just a dark spot there but there's actual surface there um, with enough detail and uh, trying to peek in a little bit of light uh, right kind of underneath that thumb um, that sort of falls and gets caught on that uh, on the left side of the glove and uh, the surface of the glove has a, a pretty pronounced texture but I'm not planning to paint all of that in um, I think that would be kind of ridiculous and not not a lot of fun so um, I'm gonna just try to uh, bring in a few indications here and there and um, kind of let the viewer fill in the rest of the blanks um, sort of what it, uh, like what I did with the top part of the glove where I just indicated a few lines um, and just from those few lines I think you already kind of get a sense of okay those there's ridges there um, a lot of times you don't have to spell everything out for the viewer and just um, create a few hints and let them um, kind of figure out the rest on their own
So now I'm just trying to pay really close attention to the um, the little details in uh, the light area of the glove and uh, um, sort of uh, the the slight highlights that happen um, with the way that the glove is turned towards the light. And I'm using a pretty bright kind of pink. Um, very very light almost uh, like a, almost a white kind of pink and uh, <clears throat> I find that sometimes if you're as you're looking at an object like this pink glove um, it's um, a little hard to imagine using that kind of a light color uh, because to you it's sort of there's an idea of that color that you have when you look at something and the idea is that it is this bright kind of very saturated pink and even in the light parts it doesn't look any less saturated um, but that's just because our eyes have this idea about that color and not necessarily observing it directly uh, so as you're starting to paint you get, be, begin to kind of get more in tune with um, what the actual colors are in the lights what the actual colors are in the darks and kind of um, um, being able to translate them into paint so even though that on the palette that pink looks like it has nothing to do with the with the glove, it works in the on the actual surface of the painting because it's it's there in relation to the other darker, more saturated pinks. And uh, <clears throat> I think the the shadow right now is a little bit too dark. It's kind of jumping out a little bit too much. So I want to lighten it up, uh, but still keeping it. Um, tonally uh, darker than any part of the the light part of the glove um, but right now it's sort of jumping out as a little bit too abrupt and too blunt So I'm fully aware that the clothespin is not exactly the right color in my painting. Um, but that's kind of a conscious decision. I didn't want to introduce a new pink into the piece. 
because um, I just thought it would be a little bit awkward just to have two different pinks. So I, I made it almost the same kind of uh, hue as the glove. And so the goal there is that it doesn't take away too much from the main subject. I think if there was a different color um, in there, it would kind of pull your eye towards that top and not allow it to kind of travel around the rest of the glove. Um, the other thing that uh, I've decided to do here is to leave that top part kind of vague and almost kind of melting into the background. Um, and uh, I think that's uh, also kind of like partially I wanted to kind of take away focus from the the outer edges of the of the painting and keep them more in the middle. Um, but also I kind of I actually kind of like the way that that looks that it's kind of vague but there's just enough information there um, for you to be aware of what's going on. So I think I'm um, just about done with this one. A couple of uh, minor little adjustments around the edges of the shadow that I want to do. But um, other than that, I think I'm uh, pretty happy with the way this painting turned out. Um, I kind of like the overall feel of it. It has this very matte, very subdued quality, even though it's a very kind of a loud object uh, color-wise. So. I think in that sense it's a, to me at least it's a success. But I don't know, let me know what you think. Um, whether you liked uh, the way it came out, or, and uh, if you would have done something different, if you would have made different decisions along the way, I'd love to hear that as well. Um, as always, uh, please uh, subscribe to this channel, turn on notif notifications, um, invite your friends to come and watch. Uh, that would be really awesome. And um, yeah, leave comments. I love to hear um, what you guys are up to, uh, whether you're painting yourselves and uh, what kind of subjects are you choosing for your paintings. I kind of got a little bit bored with uh, just uh, normal still lives and um, I'm kind of moving on to slightly more obscure subjects. Anyway. Let me know in the comments and until next time, bye bye.